Hello, my name is Chuck Sutton, here with Isotope. Today we're talking about hi-hats. They are the energy of a song. If you mix your hi-hats the wrong way, they can really hurt your track. But, all the right steps, and you can take an okay track to the next level. So to help you out, here are 8 tips on how to mix hi-hats. To follow along with these tips, using Neutron Pro and Nectar Pro, head over to isotope.com and download a free trial of Music Production Suite Pro, and let's get started. Removing lower frequencies from your hi-hats gets rid of muddiness and makes more headroom in your mix. In Neutron Pro's equalizer, you can see all of the lows that are hard to hear. A great way to hear these muddy frequencies better is to low pass your hi-hats and then use Neutron's exciter. This will exaggerate all of the low frequencies I want to get rid of with my high pass filter. The quickest way to get rid of these lows is to take a high pass filter and move it from right to left instead of the normal left to right. You'll hear the hi-hats come back into clarity and the muddiness will disappear in the process. Avoid over-processing your hi-hats. They sit in one tiny range of the spectrum, and if you add too many effects like this, it gets overwhelming. The cool takeaway here is that subtlety is key. We can fine-tune all of these effects to be less damaging to the hi-hats. First, I'm going to dial back this overdrive a lot. Then I'll use the EQ to boost the presence of the hats since the overdrive's taking care of the body. Saturation will add some aggression and reverb will help it blend into the background. And finally, some very quiet delay will help us fill up the space without needing to add new layers. Transient shaping is one of the best ways to control your hi-hats. Just like this clap, hi-hats have a transient and a body. A transient is the very first click you hear at the start of a sound. The body is everything that trails after. Neutron Pro has a transient shaper built in and it's super intuitive. The attack slider changes the transient volume and the sustain slider changes the body volume. If you want your hi-hats to sound more aggressive, turn up the attack and down the sustain. And of course, doing the opposite will give you a smooth effect. Bring down the attack and up the sustain, and you'll get more of a body than a transient. For the best results, don't do this while the hi-hats are soloed. Change the settings while the song is playing. Even if you're pushing your transient shaper to the extremes, you can always use the mix slider to dial it back down into the mix. If your hi-hats sound really harsh in the mix, try de-essing them. De-essing is usually something used on vocals to help tame the S sound, but hi-hats also exist within that S range, so we can use de-essing there. Neutron Pro's de is as easy as finding the frequencies you want to tame and then using that one threshold slider to bring it right down. Think of de as a compressor specifically designed to target this frequency because that's what it literally is. Do, Do it. it. Like this video, subscribe, hit the bell. Panning your hi-hats will increase the sense of space in the mix and most importantly make room for other instruments in the track. There's three ways to do this. The first one is panning all of the hi-hats all to the left or right. The second way is panning each hi-hat a little bit differently. The 
third way is something I do in Ableton all the time. You take a sampler that has built-in random panning, and every time you hit a MIDI note, your sample will fly around your head. Velocity and swing will take your hi-hats to the next level. This sample is a hi-hat flam, so if I perfectly quantize it, it's actually going to sound too late. Here's what it sounds like against the metronome. Pulling it back against the grid will actually humanize it and bring it back into the pocket. The same thing goes for velocity. If every sample is the same exact volume, it's going to feel too artificial. Adding slight variation and even hitting accent marks with the volume will bring humanity back into the groove. Using a dynamic EQ helps us tame specific frequencies when something gets too harsh. In Neutron Pro, all you have to do is select a band, open the Advanced menu, and choose the Dynamics. Now when you move the band around, the white outline shows you exactly how much the frequency is being tamed. If we switch the settings from Internal to External, you can sidechain another instrument to move this EQ. In this case, I used the snare as a sidechain and boosted the EQ. Now whenever the snare hits, the frequencies from the hi-hat duck and then bounce right back when the snare is done. Working in layers creates depth in your song and a rhythm that matches your music more accurately than any loop could. To compare, here's a cool hi-hat loop I found on my computer. It's all the same energy, it's a little harsh, and it has no changes in velocity or swing. With my approach, I put every single hi-hat on its own sampler so I could focus on each rhythm one at a time. The goal of hi-hats is to keep an energy and groove going, and people's ears will definitely pick up if your hi-hats weren't made or mixed for your song. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you use any of the techniques in this video, feel free to tag me and Isotope and we'll be sure to check it out. Peace!